To see more tours and test drives, be sure to check out tinyhome.tours. Hey everybody, it's Chris here from Chris and G Travels. G's in the back here. And we're with Terry today at Frost RV here in Tucson. Today we're going to be test driving a 2003 diesel pusher. This is a Discovery by Fleetwood RV. Ready to do this? Ready to go. What should we know about this coach? Well, one of the things you know about any diesel pusher is the power, the livability, and the air ride. First off, your engine is in the rear. So if you notice, you don't have to trip over anything here. Plus, we can hear each other talking at normal range. So all that noise and everything's in the rear of the coach. It's in the back of the coach. The air ride gives you uh, quite a floating ride. Very smooth. That's what we wish we had on the Alcan Highway. That's right. Yeah. Oh, wow. We can get, uh, that? We can yeah, get going can a little bit fast. This uh, particular coach, it's a 39S model, three slides. Uh, it has a 330 cat, which has uh, around 900 foot pounds of torque. Wow. 860 X, I think, would be the number there. The turning radius in this is for 50 degrees, so you might have an easier time putting this in a parking space than, uh, let's say, a Class C type motor. So, do you see many of these? 2000 or 2005 diesel pushers come through or? We do, we actually specialize in uh, those types of gears. A lot of people are focused on uh, buying a pre-2010 model in a diesel based on uh, some of the newer emission standards and using a, basically a, a secondary fuel to reburn the exhaust called DEF. But in uh, reconfiguring those engines, horsepower took, you know, a little bit of a, a hit. What you'll see when you go 2010 and newer is that if you had a 350 engine before, you're going to go to a 370 for the same type of power. And there's just more, you know, more maintenance and things. This is a Freightliner chassis with full air ride, full air brakes. Yeah, this ride is definitely a lot better than our 2008 yeah. gas coach. A bit more this um, floor plan has two opposing slides in the living room, which gives a real healthy amount of living space here. So do you see a lot of people full-time in coaches like this, or is this more of a, you know, weekender family kit, like well, adventure mobile? We see more people that are, you know, art, you know, they say, uh, sometime or six months or more a year up to full time. These will have a, an enormous amount of storage in the underbelly. They are most most of the diesel pushers are a four season coach with heated tanks. So these are designed for full time living. These are half million mile engines. And so these uh, houses are built a little bit different than uh, some of the other motorhomes on the market. So how many miles are on this coach? This coach actually has 75,000 miles on it. If you're looking at a gas coach, you might think that it was mostly used up. In a diesel of this uh, nature, they don't break in until about 35 to 40,000 miles. The breaking point, you'll have uh, a little bit better mileage, and uh, you'll notice, uh, you know, just uh, runs a little better. But these coaches really, these engines are, you know, designed to go half a million to a million miles. So the longevity is a, an aspect that puts diesel over gas coaches. You mentioned briefly storage and the air ride. Are there any other features that this has that it's just better than a than a gas coach? More livability, more power. Or well, I would say you know most of these diesel pushers, not everyone, but this one does have a uh, inverter system. That's going to give you 110 power from your 12 volt batteries. So you don't have to be plugged in, you don't have to run your generator to be able to enjoy your convection microwave oven, your uh, you know, uh, TV sets, computers, those types of things. You still require a little additional power to run your air conditioner. Those are systems that are factory installed. These will have a four battery uh, bank of six volt batteries, which will hold quite a long charge. And this has a diesel generator as well? It does. This will actually have a 7500 watt 
Onan quiet diesel generator. Uh, it's on right now. What are the advantages of a diesel generator over a gas generator? Well, the diesel generator is going to run uh, quite a few more hours between tune-ups. Uh, generates uh, really pure 50 amp power. Uh, it also is going to run off of the fuel tank on the coach, which in this case is about 100 gallons. So if you're going to dry camp, uh, you fill that fuel tank before your last stop, you can run the generator for days and days. If, if somebody was interested in purchasing a diesel coach, is there any particular things they should look out for? Like, say, test drives to here in the engine. Have, have you noticed anything that people should be cautious of? Well, about? in coaches that have been well cared for, you're going to notice right away a smooth ride. You notice I, I'm not having any problem holding on to the wheel here. Uh, you can, you know, I have driven coaches, and it's like you feel like you have to hold on to the wheel or it's going to take you around and, and move on you. So, a well cared for coach drives like a well cared for coach. And there's a little test of the air brakes. We're in about a 27,000 pound chassis here, between 27 and 29,000 pounds. And these air brakes have no problem stopping this belt. That's another big advantage. One of the other advantages when you're climbing hills and descending from the long grades is that uh, the torque in the engine is going to take you up the hill much faster than your gas engine. This feels, straight. Yeah, this feels great. As you accelerated there, that felt better than G's car. Oh, yeah. Well, here you go. We've got power available at lower RPMs with diesel. When you're going downhill, you have an exhaust brake system, which basically puts a strain on your exhaust, and it's slowing me down right now just because I'm not on the accelerator. So it's actually gearing down, and I have not touched the brakes bus ahead of us and was able to not even use the brakes to slow this coach down. Well, when you're descending a long grade in a mountain pass, you're not going to have to ride the brakes so that you don't gain momentum. You engage your uh, exhaust brake. As soon as you stop accelerating, that exhaust brake engages. And it's going to light up your brake lights as well, so people behind you know that you're going to be slowing down. So whenever you press the gas, it disengages it, and exactly. then once you let off the gas, it, it sets up again until you flip Correct. that switch. So I could utilize that in this city type driving coming up to a light, and I might barely have to put the brakes on when we get up closer to this light. I don't know if your camera can see my feet, but I'm barely about to touch the brakes right now. And right now it's around 5 o'clock, we're getting in rush hour traffic, and this thing's handling completely fun. Yeah, it is. Really fun to drive when you've driven other coaches, older gas coaches, water on the road. They're also going to track really straight. Most of these are going to have dual pane windows, better insulation in the floors and ceilings. And so, just uh, camping in general can be nicer if you're uh, in your noisy areas, you're going to have a lot more you know, peace of mind and peace of quiet inside the coach. In uh, this case, you have uh, around 80 gallon gray. 50 on the black, and again, the, the fresh is uh, somewhere around 100 gallons. So you, really, you really have some dry camping capability. So if you threw solar on this thing, oh, you yeah. could go out and hang out anywhere for a long time. That's right. With solar, you'll keep your batteries up for an indefinite amount of time, and uh, you might only use your generator if you decided to use your air conditioner. I'm going to get us up some speed on the frontage road. Frontage road looks like we're going to make better time than out on the rush hour I-10 here. Many times I've driven a diesel pusher, I look down, I'm going like 80. And it's like, whoa, I really didn't know I was going 80. Yeah, I noticed when we went over those railroad tracks, you know, it really handled. I felt like if we were in our gas coach, we'd be thinking the cabins were going to fall in on us. You, you might be feeling it. You might be catching plates out of the cupboard right now. Yeah. So right now we're going 55. Wow. This thing's just cruising right along. I really like how the 
how in the back there's so much room. Mm -hmm. Like even with the slides. In. Yeah, the design is great. These guys have been building for over 50 years. Yeah. The one thing I'd like to show you guys is this turning radius. It's pretty incredible. But you don't have to go out into the second lane just to make a right turn with this coach. Longer wheelbase and a tighter turning radius gets you handling now. Take a look at where we're going to start this turn from. Let's get a point of reference. We'll turn the wheel all the way to start. You're going to see just what happens here. And this is a 39 and a half foot coach. Wow. So we've got a whole lane wow. next to us here. some of the uh, basic advantages in the diesel pusher. Yeah, that's great. Which, by the way, for Ross RV, we specialize in Rio diesel and gas. So if someone was looking to ask about this coach or get a hold of you about your inventory, how would they, how would they contact you? Well, we, uh, we do have a telephone line right here in the store, 520-888-9209, but the best place to view our inventory would be RossRV.com. Have probably approximately 30 pictures of each coach online. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. Thank, Thank you. you. To see more tours and test drives, be sure to check out tinyhome.tours.